Hello everyone, it is Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. Today is Monday, May 30th, and it is also Memorial Day. So I am not going to be going live with you tonight, but I am still going to have this recorded video. Um, over the weekend, I had a manicure and I was encouraged by my daughter to go out of my comfort zone and get a different color. And she helped me pick out this lovely color. When I got home, I realized how close it was to our Orchid Oasis ink. And I thought, I can't waste a good manicure. I've got to design a card that's going to let me use this ink to show off my lovely nails. So that's what you're getting tonight is Orchid Oasis. I am going to be using the Flowers of Friendship stamp set, which is in the annual catalog, specifically these two items. And then I am also using a new embossing folder in the annual catalog along with... Um, my blending brush to create a little bit more detail on it. And the embossing folder that I'm using is found on page 175. It's the Twigs and Sprigs embossing folder and die. So you get this really in-depth embossing on it, plus you can die cut it. So let me show you what that's gonna look like real quick here. This is the using the embossing folder, so you can see all that detail that shows up. And then what's really cool is the die will line up exactly with the embossing folder and cut out all of the images. Um, I've cut some of these off. I was going to actually make a different card and I didn't like how it was looking. So I've set this one aside until later. Um, but you can cut out each of these big leaf images that are on here too. So pretty cool. All right, so let me jump in and show you how to start making this card. The first thing you're going to be doing is a little bit of stamping. We're actually going to decorate the envelope and the inside of our card along with stamping our sentiment. So to start with, I'm going to take this image and you do want to have some paper that you can stamp off on because we are going to be doing a little bit of that. So for the inside of my greeting, I'm just going to stamp here in the lower right hand corner. You can stamp whatever corner you want. That's the one I'm choosing to do. And then for my envelope, I'm going to be doing it in the lower left hand corner. And again, I'm stamping off just a little bit, but we're decorating it a touch. The reason I like to do my stamped images um, on the lower left corner of envelopes is it still leaves me room for a return address and to address the lucky person that's going to receive my card. So we'll set those two things aside and then I'm going to ink up the sentiment and I'm just stamping this on a piece of basic white cardstock. I do have to kind of center it in here because I'm going to be punching it out and I didn't pick a super generous piece of card scrap. Um, and the punch that I'm using is the rectangle postage stamp punch. So I'm just going to slide that in center it. I do like to usually um, stamp my sentiments and images prior to die cutting or punching because I find it's easier for me to center them. And then we will be popping this up on our card uh, going over a piece of ribbon. So I am going to add my dimensionals to the back of this, leaving the center open so that the ribbon is covered. And I can set that one aside now. The next thing we're gonna do is take our blending brush and I am using a piece of scrap just so I don't get too much ink on here that will transfer over to my card. I'm gonna just ink up my blending brush, wipe some of the excess off, and then I'm just going in a gentle circular motion over this entire piece. Um, what I'm doing is getting the ink to pick up the edges, which shows up this gorgeous embossing die um, or folder rather a little bit more than if I just left it plain. Now when I did die cut those images earlier I did actually run the embossing folder first and then ran it through to do the die cutting and I did not find that it um, knocked any of the detail out on this embossing folder. So um, it certainly is easier to line up when you're doing it that way. All right, we're going to set that aside. You may get a little bit of ink 
on your fingertips, nothing wrong with that. And now we should be ready to assemble. So we've got our five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock scored at four and a quarter and we've burnished it with our bone folder. And we are going to start by putting the piece we stamped earlier inside the card. And I'm just centering it on the inside of my card here. I like to kind of rub it in on the back of the card just in case I have any ink on my fingers and I'm not smearing it. And then I am going to take a piece of the Whisper White card stock and I'm going to attach this embossed layer that we've now added color to with our blending brush and I'm going to center that on this piece of basic white card stock you can see I practiced my stamping there earlier and then I'm going to take this um, whoops glittered organdy ribbon and we're going to decorate the front of our card with this. Now I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I don't. I was really struggling when I was practicing tying bows, so I'm just doing a quick cheat. Some days they work, some days they don't. And I'm going to take and run a little bit of adhesive on the side of my card where I want to attach the ribbon. So I'll flatten that, and that's about where I want it. So I'm just going to fold ends over like that. I did want a little kind of bow look to this card. And so I'm just going to take another piece of ribbon and cut it off at an angle, just a small piece. And I'll slip it underneath here and make a little faux bow. I haven't done this in a long time. This used to be the only way I could do my bows. Sometimes if you're short on ribbon too, this is a good way to save a little bit of ribbon. And then I'm just gonna clean up the edges a little, or the ends a little bit, and we've got our faux bow. So the next step that we're going to do is take adhesive, and again, run it on the back of this layer. And we will do that. And again, I'm just going to kind of go on the back side because my hands are a little inky. And we will take the sentiment that we stamped earlier, peel off. I'm trying to be careful that I don't scratch my nails up now, so it's making it harder for me to work. I did try gel polish this time and I think it might last a little bit longer. I'm impressed so far with what I've seen. Okay, and then the last step that we're gonna do is add just a few pieces of bling. Um, originally, I wanted to color my, my rhinestones and that's where I got a lot of the ink on my hands. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing instead and it's kind of a gutsy move, but if you're confident, go for it. I think you're gonna find it may actually be a little bit easier. So with my take your pick tool, I'm just picking up um, three of the rhinestones and randomly placing them on here. And I'm gonna press them down with my finger just to make sure they are there. And then I'm taking one of the Stampin' Right markers and I'm using the wide end. And while it's attached to my card, I am just running my marker real quick over the top and this way I can set it aside and let it dry without having to touch it anytime soon. So there you go that's just kind of my quick tip it's not going to work for everybody but it does work for me and this is my Orchid Oasis themed card. Hope you liked it everybody have a great week and I will see you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.